And on, um, we are live. Yes, we are. Good morning. All right, all right, all right. So much going on today. Hello, you guys. Hello. <sighs> I heard that we have a happy birthday to give out to Matt Napier. Happy birthday, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah, Sarah wanted us to say happy birthday to you. I don't even know how old Matt is. Do we know how old he is? You know what? Did she tell me? I'll Did have he just turn 30? He just turned 30, didn't he? I'm sure it's 30. 30. I feel like that's right. 30th birthday to <laughs> Matt. We're all wishing him a happy birthday. Yes. So that's awesome. And um, Yay. trying to think of what else is going on. You guys, I just, when I walked into my office, I noticed that a pillow has been destroyed in my living room. And it's one of those feather pillows. It looks like a duck has been murdered in my living room. So I just, you know what I did? I just walked past it. I was like, I'm not going to deal. <laughs> I have work to do. I can't. I think it was Theo. <sighs> just, I can't. I, this is why I can't have nice things. This is why. Because well, dogs. Dogs. Yeah. They are something. Can I just also say thank you to Sherry Fox, who already sent us a super chat. Sherry, thank you. She says, in honor of my newest granddaughter, born April 14th, almost in the car. Oh, my God. Barely gosh. made it. And she was born in the ER. Muffy, me. I'm on the way to help. Oh, my gosh. How exciting. So Congrats. fun. So, so fun. That's fantastic. All right, you guys, um, you need to go to aura.com slash chicks, get a 14 day free trial and then see how much of all of your crap is being sold online. There were four instances in the right after I signed up for aura and I still get alerts for stuff and I'm super careful about my stuff online. And I'm like, Oh, none of my stuff is being, yeah, it's being sold. <laughs> so definitely check it out. Aura.com slash chicks do that. And also make sure you're subscribed to this podcast. Have you guys done that? Subscribe that right in your Put pocket, right there. in your tool belt, Put us in your fanny pack, and then, like all the places. <laughs> do it. Mm -hmm. Um, my, I, my, what are they? Um, AirPods. They are uh -huh. borked, so everything sounds weird. But as long as I don't sound weird to you, then that's no, you good. sound exactly the same. Awesome. Can you? Can you? You can hear me though, right? Yeah, I can. It's just it's everything. I don't know. It's just weird. It's they're oh. different, and I don't like the wire. I don't like being connected. I just yeah. don't like any of it. But something is borked with my AirPods, so. Anyway, um, I did want to mention Camp Tono because Camp Tono is coming up at the end of June oh and we are now starting to like re-engage with the fact that that's happening before we know it. So, so uh, there will be shirts. So for those of you who always get the commemorative Camp Tono t-shirts, they will be available uh, once again. We're working on the design right now and then we will work on... Um, getting them produced and we'll get you all the details about that once they are available, but have no fear shirts are on the way for camp Tono 2024. So that will be happening. So just kind of hold your horses on that front. And then also just a, a juicy little tidbit that I saw, I think on Friday evening, and I did not pay attention to this show at all, but I know a lot of people cared about the old bachelor guy, um, the golden bachelor. I think oh yeah, him. that dude. Yeah. He's divorcing the chick that he picked already. And I Are feel like serious? that show just ended like two minutes ago. Like, yeah, I didn't pay attention to it either, but I remember we talked about it briefly on the show for about half a second too <laughs> and yeah that's okay so that was another successful match yeah. by television and media good, good way job. to go <laughs> way to go entertainment industry <laughs> okay. i don't know why people think that's going to work there was the no. one couple that it worked for and everybody else is just mm -hmm. a disaster so yeah but anyway, trisha, was, trisha what's his name it was like the very S first one sutters sutton's yeah, sutter Sutton. i think it's sutter, think it's sutter. yeah uh -huh. yeah she was an alpha Kai. I just remember. That's the only reason I remember her. She was and she a, loved pink and she said it pink. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember? Cause I watched that one way back not. in the day. I watched it and it would drive me absolutely mm -hmm. crazy because she, she would say it pink. Like it was P E E N K. Yeah. And I was like, pink. She went to IU, didn't she? She went to Indiana University. Did she really? I didn't yeah, know I'm pretty sure she was an Alpha Chi, Alpha Chi Omega at IU, if I'm not mistaken. You guys can correct I me if I'm I did not know that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Megan Sirbo, I uh, hope I'm saying your name right. Thank you very much. Megan says, Patriot's Day here in Massachusetts. Thank you for making my morning commute wonderful every day. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for saying that. That is so nice. Uh, you know what else is nice? Is olive oil. 
Let me just, we have not talked about our friends at Fresh Pressed Olive Oil in forever and a hot minute, but <laughs> I've been eating, well, I, is that right? Eating it? I, I you mean, do I guess, eat it. Yeah, you, you do eat, eat it. it. Yeah. Um, the, okay. So I have to tell you about TJ Robinson. He is the self-professed olive oil hunter. And this man has developed this entire olive oil club, which is absolutely phenomenal. He goes to like these gold metal award-winning farms and gets olive oil from these farms right after the olives are picked. So it is the freshest possible olive oil. And you wouldn't necessarily think if you're not like into food, you're not a foodie and you don't cook a lot, you wouldn't necessarily think that there's a difference between olive oils. There I is. was that person. You were that person mm -hmm. until we actually tried this stuff. And then we were like, oh my God, this is not just like something that you cook with. This is something that you use on top of things and it's delicious. It's amazing. Oh my God. It is so good. And so now we are club members, which means on the regular, we get new shipments of all different kinds of olive oil. And it is, oh, I mean, it's just delicious. I don't know how to express it other than to just say it is super delicious and super fresh. And you can taste that difference because you don't know when you're going to the supermarket, you have no idea how long some of those things have been on the shelf. You just don't know. You taste With, it like you will taste yeah. the difference, you guys. It's so good. Yeah, yeah, immediately you will. And the cool thing is that when you join the club, you can get a full size bottle of this olive oil for one dollar. That's just for joining the club. And you, if you don't like the club, you can cancel, but you won't because as soon as you try it, you're going to be like, I need this in my life on the regular. And you can do that by going to chickslovealiveoil.com. It's very easy to remember, chickslovealiveoil.com. And then get your full-size bottle of artisanal olive oil for just one buckaroo. That's yeah, it. Tra Travis yeah. is right. Dip bread in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I've made nice. the thing like I have. And you're going to be once again, you're going to be like, who even are you? But when you take some of the olive oil and then you put some of the a um, uh, little bit of like, herbs, like the yeah. herbs and stuff in it, the herbs yeah. and a little bit of the minced garlic and oh, yeah. um, and, and some balsam balsamic oh. uh, vinegar. Yes. So good. And so then you dip the bread in there, right? And then you dip the bread in there. Right. Mm -hmm. It's That's, so good. God, I'm anyway. starving right now. I'm starving, you guys. <laughs> Chickslovealiveoil.com is how to get it. All right. We got to talk about like the impending World War III that right. we're all facing. It's, it's um, fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to see here. It's everything fine. is, uh, everything's fine. You know, mm -hmm. I don't necessarily feel like I'm going to get spazzed out about anything until I hear how concerned, um, Je what's her name? Jennifer. Jennifer with the short hair. Griffin. Gen yes. Jennifer short haired Griffin. Yeah. When I hear that she is alarmed, mm -hmm. it's kind of alarming. You yeah, know what I mean? Danger. You in danger, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. So to kick off our discussion about what's happening uh, between Iran and Israel, uh, we'll let Jennifer Griffin just sort of give the details and her perspective about what's going on. Hi, Neil. I've been covering the Middle East for 30 years, as you know, and I have never seen things so tense with the potential for a wider war breaking out between Israel and Iran, which could draw the U.S. and others into a wider Middle East war. Until now, the U.S. has been facing Iranian proxies, but in the wake of the Israeli strike on April 1st in Damascus, Syria, that killed the Iranian Revolutionary Guard general and six other top Iranian commanders responsible for arming Iran's proxy groups, Iran appears poised to avenge that attack with a massive show of force targeting Israeli territory. In recent days, the U.S. has prepositioned additional military assets in the region. The attacks by the Houthis, supported by Iran, continue to threaten U.S. ships in the Red Sea. Tensions are at an all-time high. And that's great. Fantastic. Yeah, I, oh. I didn't feel very assured or reassured after hearing that. Mm -hmm. No. And yeah. of course, that was ahead of the actual attack, the actual onslaught, which then happened. And um, before that happened, the gals on Outnumbered were also talking about what Jennifer Griffin just reported and Biden's weakness, because unfortunately, I mean, we can see how different the world is under Biden than it was under Trump. Mm -hmm. Everything was calmer under Trump, right? And now there look in any corner of the world, it doesn't matter. Everything is on fire. Um and Emily Campagno uh talked about the weakness and how this impacts all of us. What happens? Well, Iran is emboldened. 
That's right. We right. demonstrated to the world how Biden responds and behaves to our allies in Afghanistan. We set the plate, we set the table right then. The reason that, as Jennifer Griffin frighteningly points out, that we are the closest to a Middle East war than we've been in decades is because there's been a failure of deterrence because our president has a fear of escalation that has eclipsed any show of strength. When you have a leader in the Oval Office that has no backbone, that is afraid of ruffling feathers throughout the globe and throughout the Middle East, that is afraid of showing support for allies rather than in, in exchange for capitulating to enemies, essentially, this is what happens. The fact that it's in the Supreme Ayatollah's court right now and he's making a decision on what exactly to do, it shouldn't have gotten that far. If you're in a bar and you see a really big guy with spikes on his knuckles, you're not even going to get to the point of talking smack to him. You are deterred. The globe right now is on the brink because this person in our Oval Office has not made it clear what would happen if things happen to our allies, or should I say maybe he's made it clear what will happen, which is nothing. Yeah. Weak, weak men create chaos and turmoil. Yep. And this it's he's the weakest, weakest president we've ever had in my lifetime. I mean, I at least my lifetime that I've ever seen. He's so weak and they know it and they can smell blood in the water. Right. Absolutely. And yeah. then the mixed messages that he keeps sending to Israel. It's like where our support for you is ironclad. Also, don't do anything like just consider this a win because not enough bad stuff happened to you as a result of this attack. So just take the W and just keep quiet. Don't don't retaliate. No other country in the universe would be expected to just take what Israel just took. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is outrageous. And of course, all he can say when he was asked about this before the attack started, he went he reverted to his standard line, which you'll hear. What is your message to Iran in this moment? Don't. Oh my our God. American personnel will at that response? risk, Mr. President. Mr. Mr. President, our, our American Mr. troops at risk. That's as worked well. really well so far. We are devoted to the defense of Israel. We are will you? support Israel. We oh will defend, help defend Israel, and Iran will not succeed. Thank you very much. And I'm I'm kind of convinced that like don't means I'm an inept dumbass and farsi. Is that, am I, I don't know, does anybody speak Farsi out there? Because that's <laughs> obviously what don't means. I mean, it's just so useless. Right. So useless. And we actually have a little flashback clip of him saying this about Iran before on two different occasions within the same clip, though, uh, both with 60 Minutes. wonder, Mr. President, what you would say to him if he is considering using chemical or tactical nuclear weapons. Don't. My God. Don't. Don't. And I wonder, what is your message to Hezbollah and its backer, Iran? Don't. God. Don't, don't, don't. So scary. I mean, what are... Just so scary. He said, my God, the, the least scary guy, <laughs> least frightening dude on the planet, right? Shuffling, sh shuffling in his little New Balance shoes. Yeah. I, I can't. Yeah. Hope yeah. Is. yeah. Right. I think he said don't to the, the 10 million illegals that cross the border too didn't he because that well Kamala said don't come D yeah there you go so that's <laughs> exactly what they did <laughs> they poured over the border right they mm -hmm. do exactly everything that he says not to because he has nobody cares nobody nope. cares what he says no uh Alexandra thank you so much Alexandra says in Croatia we call olive oil liquid gold many Croatians hand make it and some will spend 50 euros to 100 euros it's a great business endeavor over there Interesting. Wow. Did not know that. All sorts of uses, too, I bet. Mm -hmm. Much cheaper when you just join chickslovalivoil.com. That's true. Uh, and Leah, there's Leah. Uh, Leah, thank you. Leah says, I'm so Leah. grateful for the love, support, and prayers I received from Chicks on the Right community during a very scary night. You all are such great people. We love you, Leah. I've been oh thinking God. about you all weekend. Same, same, mm -hmm. same, same. Um, okay. And amazingly, people have been recirculating a tweet from Joe Biden that he posted in 2020 about Trump, which is not aging well because he said Donald Trump has no strategy when it comes to Iran. No end game. The only way out of his self-made crisis is through diplomacy, clear eyed, hard nosed diplomacy grounded in strategy. That's not about one off decisions or one upmanship. Speaking on January 13th of 2020. Um, can you even? It's like every, it's so weird that everything that they accuse us of they right? do. It's they are the ultimate gaslighters and projectors. 
Yep. I, it, can people not see this on that side? How can they not see this? I know. And, and what's worse is that because you heard all week that we knew that this was happening. So yeah. um, AG tweeted, Biden tells Iran not to launch an attack. They do it anyways with unprecedented firepower. Biden responds by demanding <sighs> Israel not retaliate and then leaks it to the press as a signal to certain voters. And if that's not a perfect encapsulation of this administration's, uh, I don't know what FP stands for. Foreign policy. Foreign policy. You're right. Exactly. I don't know yeah. why I didn't think of that. I don't know what is. That's exactly right. Right. This is he what does they do. literally. And who was it? Wasn't it one of Obama's own people that said Joe Biden is wrong on foreign policy like 100 percent of the time? Yeah. Well, I mean, because he's an idiot. My God, he's just a figurehead. And we all know who's pulling the strings right now. Right. It is Obama. <laughs> it's, it's like Obama and Valerie Jarrett. That whole I mean, crew. Yeah. They're like BFFs with Iran. Yeah. And then Chuck Schumer, you remember several weeks ago where he was saying he was calling for a new election in Israel and ripping on Netanyahu. And then he tries to tweet out as Israel is under attack from Iran, we stand with Israel and its people and the U.S. will do everything we can to support Israel's defense against Iran. Full and Jackie shit. called him out. Jackie was like Schumer called for a regime change a couple of weeks ago exactly. over Netanyahu's prosecution of the war against Hamas and Gaza. Amen. Sit down. Chuck yeah. Schumer. Take every last God. Seat. Democrats are the party now. of an They're the anti-Israel party. And we'll get to that. I know we have some clips on that. Yeah. But, but that's who they are. And they need mm -hmm. to own it. Yeah. John Kirby making the rounds on the Sunday talk shows yesterday after the attacks. Um, and he was asked about whether or not these attacks by Iran to Israel also signal danger to the United States. And here is how Kirby managed that question. Are you, as we sit here right now, aware of any threats to U.S. troops in the region? We are staying vigilant to exactly that potential threat, but we have not seen uh, any attacks on U.S. troops or personnel in the region or our facilities um, and uh, n nothing to report to you this morning. But we're going to obviously watch that very, very closely. Just to get a sense of how this came together, did the United States have any back channel communications with Iran, if only to deconflict the airspace over Syria? I would just, uh, not in terms of the operations, but I mean, obviously in the lead up to what happened yesterday, uh, we, so made, there were back we channel made it very clear. I would just say we made it very clear uh, to all parties, including Iran, uh, what we would do and how we would continue to defend uh, Israel and also how seriously we would take any potential threat to our personnel and our facilities in the region. We would take it really seriously, you guys. Yeah, well, okay. Maybe you could have done that a couple of years ago. Kirby actually tried to blame Trump for all this. They're always doing that. Any mm -hmm. any chance that they get. Yeah. It, shut up. <laughs> well, and he was also on with Shannon Bream. I don't have this clip, but just wanted to um, lead up to what you're about to see. Because he was on with Shannon Bream, who he continues to fight with about whether the relief of sanctions on Iran, with the freeing up of all of this money... Mm -hmm. um, it, whether or not that money is actually fungible. And of course, everyone with a brain knows that it is. And John Kirby continues to say that it's not. And yet, so back in September of 2023, as you'll hear, he was insisting, oh, no, 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 we're going to have very strict parameters on that money. And, and Iran we were, cannot use it for terror. Blah, blah, we blah. were questioning it then. Everybody with half with a brain cell. And we, we were all questioning it then. I mean, and then here we are today. Yeah. So listen to what he says in September of 2023. And then how did that work out in January of 2020? The U.S. will have visibility. We'll be able to engage in oversight and about where the money was going and for what purpose. If Iran tries to divert the funds, we'll take action and we'll lock them up again. And there will be sufficient oversight to make sure that really? the request is valid and that it's going through uh, uh, vendors who we, who we and the Qataris can trust will actually contract for the goods, the medical equipment, the food, whatever it is. The regime doesn't get to touch the money, Peter. Doesn't go to them. They don't get to, the, they don't get to decide uh, ultimate destination, uh, and, uh, and they have no direct access to it. Um, John, Iran made two transactions withdrawing from the previously frozen funds in Oman. What were those transactions for? I don't have the details on that, Jackie. You're going to have to let me get back to you on that. Yeah. Uh huh. Right. That face. Cause it, I mean, <laughs> it's the greatest face ever, right? Because listen, if anybody can do like accounting analysis, 
and, a, and accountability of where money goes. It's a government. It's our government, right? I mean, they're so good at that. They've always been so good at all of that. It's like yeah. they know exactly where all the COVID money went. They know exactly where all the like build back better money went, right? I mean, they're so good at handling our money, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> really? Look at that face. Look at it. <laughs> I love that they caught that face. That was Listen, absolutely perfect. And and terrorists are going to terrorist no matter what. I don't know. Why are we giving money to these people that hate us? Why? Ever? It's a great question. Uh, that same Kristen Welker chick was asking John Kirby whether or not, you know, we need to worry about this, this escalating. The, is this going to be a wider conflict? And his answer was so KJP-like. It was so useless and pointless that she re-asked the question and he still it didn't get any better a lot of people watched what happened in the skies over the middle east overnight and they are wondering this morning has this now escalated into a wider war i don't think there's any reason that it needs to oh my god but has it has it is are, are we now in the midst of a wider war the president doesn't believe that it needs to move in that direction whatsoever Kristen. the iran Oh my God. Why do, why should we trust you? Why? And this clip is evidence of that. Why should right. we trust you? Yeah, this clip actually came about a week before October 7th. This is just a little flashback. I'm sure you guys have seen it, but it bears repeating. The attacks against U.S. forces have stopped. Our presence in Iraq is stable. I emphasize for now because all of that can change. And the Middle East region is quieter today than it has been in two decades. Right. It's doing great. It's doing great. We're doing, we're doing great, you guys. <laughs> Stellar. Stellar just, job he's doing. It's awesome. And uh, mm -hmm. this fellow on Twitter really succinctly summarized how everything has gone. In 2022, Biden warns Putin to not invade Ukraine. Two weeks later, Russia invades Ukraine. January 2024, Biden warns Iran not to do anything. Two weeks later, Iran proxies kill three U.S. troops. Yesterday, Biden warns Iran not to attack Israel. And today, Iran attacks Israel. Yeah, he's he's such a force, our president. So whenever, whenever he says don't, he should probably follow that up by don't listen to anything I say. Yeah, because you're not anyway. Don't. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, Idiot. God, he's just the worst. Uh, Marco Rubio was on to talk about this issue. There's a couple clips of him, one very short and one a little bit longer. I'm just going to smoosh them together and let you hear both of them together. I really like him. Oh, um, I do too. I like Marco Rubio. The continuing part of this public game that they are playing, which frankly encourages Iran and Hezbollah, which we haven't even talked about, and the Houthis, and uh, all these other elements that are targeting Israel. Well, I, I, I support defending American troops in the region. You know, we have people stationed in the region in multiple countries, and we sent them there. Whether people like them being there or not, the bottom line is we sent these young Americans there, and our job is to protect them. So I'm in favor of doing anything you can to protect them and prevent them from being attacked. But Israel is not asking us to launch attacks on Iran. I am not, have ever heard the Israelis come to us and say, will you help us or will you attack Iran or go in after Iran? They're not asking for that. They're not asking for it. But I think we go from that to the other extreme, which is Joe Biden telling Netanyahu, take the win, don't do anything. And then his people leaking it to the media, leaking it to the press. And right. what it sets up is they know that Israel's going to respond. They know this for a fact. So why would the White House leak it? There's only one reason they leak that. And that is that so when Israel does respond, the White House can say, we told them not to do it. And at least somehow, in some way, appease these so-called peace activists, by the way, these so ceasefire now people who were out yesterday cheering the launch of hundreds of rockets and drones and missiles against Israel. People that are out there cheering military attacks of this scale and scope are not peace activists. These are anti-Semites, anti-Israel, pro-terrorist elements out there. And we need to stop calling them peace activists. They are not peace activists. Nope. You don't, peace activists do not cheer massive attacks against other countries, which is what they were doing yesterday. So I guess this is part of the White House's effort to appease them by putting this out there proactively. Yeah, he wants to appease people that are screaming death to America. Mm -hmm. That's who he wants to appease. That's who our president wants to appease. What a piece of crap this guy is. Because that's his base. That's yeah, his that, base, and he needs to reel them back in. Right. That's who Democrats are now. They're the party of anti-Israel. They're the party of death to America. Because make no mistake, once they're done with Israel, they'll come for us. They are burning American flags, and they're screaming death to America. If you're on that side, you're on the wrong damn yeah. side. 
for sure. There's a lot of mixed reaction in terms of, you know, what should happen next? What should Israel Israel's response be? Lex Friedman, very much a peace activist in the true sense. Um, and he said, beware of warmongers in the military industrial complex. A full on regional war will lead to immeasurable suffering for everyone. It must be avoided at all costs, to which Lach- Lahav Harkov responded. It's very easy to talk about avoiding war at all costs when the missiles aren't being shot at you. Yeah. Which was, I thought, a very And again, again, they will not stop. No, they, they won't. won't. They won't stop. I mean, I don't think people understand their long game. Like, I re- I truly feel that way. You can fight with me all you want. I, I, but I feel their long game is destroy them. And then after they destroy them, they come for us. You don't think that they're here waiting to do that? I mean, it's like yeah. you're out of your mind if you think that if you think otherwise. This tweet I thought was interesting too. Don't let this crisis go to waste. Take out Iran's nuclear reactors, and that is something that I would be very much in favor of. I would too. There's yeah. no reason not to at this point. Iran or Israel t- truly has the upper hand at the moment because they were. They were they suffered a barrage of attacks, which went absolutely nowhere, thanks to the defense systems in place. And so there should be a response. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't it be great to just eliminate Iran's nuclear threat altogether? Now, how easy that is, I have no idea. I can't speak to that. But I thought that that was a great sort of. Yeah, that would be that would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yeah. And I'm sure. Listen, I'm sure that we've we've paid to build those nuclear reactors up. I'm sure that American taxpayer money, hardworking Americans have given money to those, which makes me absolutely sick to my stomach. Yeah. Uh, I have to interrupt our talk about World War III and the impending nature of it to remind people that it's time to get comfy because we're going to be settling in for the long haul when it comes to this stuff. And one of the comfiest things that you can put onto your body is something from CozyEarth.com. And specifically, I don't have them on today because they're only because they're dirty and I wore them all weekend. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but the joggers from Cozy Earth, oh my God. The second I took them out of the packaging when I ordered them, I was like, this is, this. it's like a, it's beyond, like you can think about silk and what that feels like. This is beyond that. This is a softness that I didn't even know could exist in the natural world, but it does somehow. And CozyEarth.com has figured out the secret of making it. It's viscose from bamboo and it is unlike any other fabric that you would want against your skin. It's temperature regulating, it's luxurious, and it's the perfect thing to get for the mom in your life. Mother's Day is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. And so treat your mama to the luxury that she deserves. She doesn't want chocolate or flowers. She wants No, because those don't last. No, she wants this. She yeah. wants this. Mm-hmm. This Mother's Day, uh, it, you can you can help prioritize the mom in your life. So you can prioritize her self care, her sleep health. Because if you get the sheets, this is something that really the temperature regulating sheets are like nothing else. Your mama deserves it. Don't forget to use promo code Cozy Chicks at checkout. This will get you thirty five percent off. And then after you place your order, make sure to select podcast in the little survey at the end. And then there will be our show will be listed in the drop down menu. That would be very, very helpful for us. Um, And you're going to set your mom up for the best Mother's Day ever. So save thirty five percent at checkout with code Cozy Chicks at Cozy Earth dot Um, Can you believe that Mother's Day is like a month away? No. How is this possible? We were just in Costa Rica. We were right. It was just (laughs) Christmas, you guys. Like, how is that even possible? What is going on? It's like warp speed. It's it's crazy. Uh, It's it's absolutely crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, Dave Portnoy, always a voice of reason, even though he is completely out of control most of the time. Behavior wise, I can't help but love him. And on this, he's absolutely right. He said there is no country that is consistently attacked by their enemies and then told to use restraint when defending themselves, despite superior military more than Israel. I want peace for all innocents in the Middle East. I also fully support uh, support Israel's right to exist and defend itself. Why is this not common knowledge? You know what? Release the hostages. I, if why? they're even alive at this point. It's like, this is the thing. And why is nobody, ta- why is nobody in America talking about that? Why are our leaders not demanding that? I'm so sick. Of- it's been six months. That's yeah. it. And oh, then literally at like month four, everybody just stopped talking about it. They stopped talking about the hostages. What is wrong with people in this? Like, what is wrong with our leaders? 
It's just, it's so it's disheartening just, to see so many Americans siding with Iran. What in the world? With, with terrorists. I, I just can't with believe. With Hamas. Yeah. It's like, what is wrong with people in our country? It's despicable. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. And it's all the fault of this education system, which we're the only country that teaches our own citizens to hate our own country. Right. Why do we do this? Mm -hmm. Why do we do this? I will never understand it. Senator Kennedy, a national treasure, as always, yeah. uh, has thoughts about what is happening this week, what happened this weekend. Yes. And, he is. and in the past 60 days, we have seen President Biden uh, go wobbly into his in his support of Israel. And today, the White House has already leaked to the press early this morning that they're not going to participate in an Israeli response to what Iran just did. Now, let me say it again. More sheep is not going to solve the wolf problem. My advice to the president today, for what it's worth, Mr. President, don't. Uh, stop it. <laughs> Support Israel. Uh, with respect, go to Amazon and buy a spine online. <laughs> Um, peace through weakness never works. Not with these hard, hard men. Yeah, exactly. Bye, spine exactly. Online. Bye, spine <laughs> online. Yeah, exactly. He is. He is saying exactly what we said at the beginning, which is weak men create chaos and turmoil mm -hmm. and war. This is like what's happening. He's weak, pathetic, yeah. and weak. <laughs> I just love him. Uh, meanwhile, to our earlier point about how there's actual American citizens who are cheering all this on and supporting Iran, it makes no sense. But the free, pe free press, a free press journalist was in a conference in Chicago for a story to do a story about how far left activists are planning to disrupt the D Democrat National Committee. A convention, I should say, which will be very, very interesting. Yeah, it will be. And then in the midst of their conference, the news broke that Iran had just launched drones and missiles heading towards Israel. And they started chanting, hands off Iran, because these people are psychotic lunatics. Hands off Iran! Hands oh my off God. Iran! Hands off Iran! Look at the mask. I know, Iran! I know. The one of the pink is my favorite. Yes. Look at the one. Look at the lady with the pink mask, you guys. What oh is my that God. contraption around her head? Hands what is that? I mean, I, you know she drove all the way in her Prius like that. <laughs> like she had that stupid contraption on her head and was driving. She's like, oh, God, I'm so afraid of a virus. Oh, no. <laughs> God, these people. Well, and these activists, uh, you know, they're all over the world, unfortunately. And in Toronto, they were holding, get this, because uh, this is irony in a nutshell. They were holding a ceasefire protest, okay? So they are, mm -hmm. ostensibly, they are calling for peace. And yet, during their little, their little, you know, get-together, <laughs> their little activist party, the news broke that Iran had just fired off its missiles. And here was their reaction. These peace lovers, this is their reaction. <laughs> I would like to make a quick announcement to interrupt the protest to bring you this announcement. The Islamic Republic of Iran has just sent tens of drones towards Israel. Oh, so peaceful. So peaceful. So peaceful. So peaceful. Where is this again, Mark? What city? This comes okay. as a direct response to the bombing of Israel to Syria, Iraq, Palestine, that little Lebanon. kid. Israel has bombed multiple countries. Unbelievable. Why have they done that now? Why has Israel bombed? Why did Israel bomb that the Islamic Republic uh, guard? Why did they do that? Is mm -hmm. there a reason? Yeah, it's listen, they are constantly defending themselves. And God, I mean, and that's all they do. That's all they do is defend themselves. And they, and for some reason, I wonder what that reason is. People are like, you can't defend yourself. We want to wipe you off the face of the earth. Gee, why have they been facing this for like eons? Why? Oh, I don't know. It's probably because they're Jewish. Exactly. And is, has there Lord. ever been a time when Israel has been an aggressor? Who it, Has there I ever swear. been a time when Israel has not wanted to just be left alone to exist? That is all they've ever wanted. And yet there's so many psychopaths out there, so many anti-Semitic psychopaths who don't want them to exist that they're constantly attacking them. 
And so what are they supposed to do? Well, they well, what people want them to do is just take it. And then they, they want them to cease to exist is what oh they God. want. They want them to die. That's what they want. Well, Trump was at a rally uh, over the weekend and he pointed to Biden's weakness as well and said things would be a lot different if he were president. Believable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. Yeah, but America does. prays for Israel. We send our absolute support to everyone in harm's way. This is an attack that would not have happened. I mean, to think about to think about what we have to go through. We will return the world to peace through strength and it'll happen very quickly. I will revive American strength abroad and we will restore American strength at home. We were respected four years ago all over the world. Today, we are considered a joke. It's not gonna be for long, believe me. It's not gonna be for long. Israel. He, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. And he's getting, I mean, a, like in the polls, you're seeing blacks, Hispanics, everybody is starting to like, it's starting to tick up for him because mm -hmm. people are so over this crap. They're just over it. And they see that it's getting worse and worse and yeah. worse and worse. How can they not? How can you not see that it's getting worse? <laughs> it's like you can listen. This administration can try to spin it as much as they want to spin it and try to force feed some ridiculously crafted narrative down our throats. It ain't working. <laughs> we're wise to you. Mm -hmm. We see what's going on. Because we're living it. <laughs> um, just to cap off this discussion and to add a little bit of levity, which is, of course, our mission whenever we do this show. Yes. Here is a video talking about how mean Israel was to those Iranian drones. Israel has been shooting down thousands of innocent Iranian drones, mm -hmm. and it needs to stop now. 40% of those drones are are children. These are <laughs> adolescent drones that are in the infancy of their dronehood. These are drones that will never be able to capture a sunset. These are drones that will never experience filming a <laughs> landscape or a big shot of a city or a Jake Gyllenhaal ambulance chase scene. Please pray for the drones of Iran. Shame on you, Israel. Shame on you. I mean, they're adolescent drones. They're just babies, you guys. They're never going to be able to go to their prom, these drones. <laughs> Oh my gosh. It just, uh, it, things just are so weird, right? So like everything is so weird. It's, it's so dumb. <laughs> Alexandra, thank you so much. Alexandra says, Dave Ramsey always said that the snowflakes can buy a backbone at Walmart, but Amazon is definitely better. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He's right. Um, we have the reason for my name today, you'll find out momentarily. Uh, it's, it's a play off of F.A. F O and we have the very best example of that of all time to share with you. Um, but first we do want to remind everybody that if you have not gotten your free information gold kit from birchgold.com slash chicks, today is a great day to do it because I don't even know what today, what today is going to bring. As we mentioned last week, we showed a video, um, that, that all these crazy activists have put together trying to create a global day of disruption of economic disruption. And there's lots and lots of, uh, target cities that are threatened. Um, I don't know what they're going to do, but today <laughs> promises to be, um, a very strange and weird day and kind of every day between now and the election promises to be an extra strange day, which is why if you're interested in protecting your wealth or your money, I know a lot of people are going to be like, I don't have wealth. Okay, I, I hear you. I get you. I feel you. But whatever money you do have, you want to protect it, right? And when you buy gold or when you invest in gold, it's a hedge against market inflation and market fluctuations. And that's why it's so important to just at least get educated about how gold and other precious metals can be beneficial to you. There's no one better at doing it than birchgold.com slash chicks. And they'll do it for free with no obligation. They're just going to send you information. And then you just can look at it and learn and then decide, okay, I'm done. I don't need anything else from you, Birch Gold. Thank you very much. Or you may decide, wow, thank you for educating me. And now I would like your help in investing. Whichever the case, you're still going to be educated. And that's the most important thing. Visit birchgold.com slash. So speaking of the crazy protesters, there was a woman. <laughs> her name is not important. Um, she decided to show up. I think this is in California. She showed up to it was. like a city council meeting. I think it was Bakersfield. OK, she showed up to a city council meeting to demand that that uh, group of folks immediately call for a ceasefire because we know how helpful that is when oh, like, yeah. a random city councils say 
we call for a ceasefire literally does nothing. But she was demanding it. And she demanded it in a way that crossed several lines, you might say. And so you're going to hear how psychotic her little testimony to this committee was. And then you'll see what happened to her. Now I'm here to speak in support of the city council introducing a ceasefire resolution, specifically the one um, United Liberation Front um, has drafted. I don't have faith that you'll do this. You guys are all horrible human beings and Jesus probably would have killed you himself. Yeah. And the thing is though, it's very clear to me as in someone who's been an organizer for the past couple of years, that none of you care because you, you guys don't care about anything happening in Palestine or any other country where oppression occurs because you don't care about the oppression occurring here. And I understand that you guys are all horrible people, but the thing is, 2,300 people being evicted in the last year, those are votes. And you guys, those are votes to win here in Bakersfield. And while you, you guys parade Gandhi around as a Hindu holiday called Chaitra Navratri it starts off this week, I remind you that these holidays that we practice, that other people in the Global South practice, believe in violent revolution against their oppressors. And I hope one day somebody brings the guillotine and kills all of you motherfuckers. <coughs> The oh. increased criminalization for no need other than you don't like when people come and hold you guys accountable for introducing ceasefire resolutions because the only escalation in violence has been by you all. And so there's no need to continue. In the last five years I've attended city council meetings, there's never been metal detectors. There's never been more cops. The only reason you're doing it is because people actually don't care if you guys don't like them and they're actually resisting so you want to criminalize them. So regardless of whether you elect people into office, they'll backstab you, they'll let you die, and for that reason, you guys want to criminalize us with metal detectors, we'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. Oh! Next speaker, please. You can't say that. You can't say that. And so Lance, here, she, Hev, what happened when she effed around and found out. Officers are going to, officers are going to escort you out and take care of that. And they we did. begin tonight with your 17th <laughs> Take care of the trash. A woman arrested Wednesday after making threats to the city council was ordered to stay at least 500 yards away from City Hall in court today. Pro-Palestinian protester Riddy Patel is charged with eight felony counts of threatening officials after tensions at Wednesday night's city council <laughs> meeting when she made threatening comments to city council members. You guys want to criminalize us with oh. metal detectors? We'll see you at your house. We'll murder you. Okay, wow. Oh, not so tough now. Looks like they got rid of her. <laughs> Oh, she's crying. A deputy public defender entered not guilty pleas on Patel's behalf to eight oh. counts of threatening a public official and 10 counts of making terroristic threats. She's due back in court later this month. Cry harder, terrorist. Cry harder. <laughs> Make an example what is it of that it. They say cope and seethe. Cope and seethe. Yeah. <laughs> cope and seethe. Because uh, listen, go to jail. Make an example of her. Absolutely. She's freaking terrorist, man. Yeah. You don't get to do that. You don't get to do that here. I can't believe that this is not obvious. God. And yet, here we are. She actually thought she could say, we're going to come to your houses and murder you. Yeah. And thought nothing was going to happen to her. Yeah. How dumb are these people? And then she's crying about it. Yeah. I, I can't love the victim. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not, Riddy. <laughs> God, I just love you. everything about that crying. Yeah, I love a, it. And it was great, wasn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. It was great. Uh, all right, let's get to some other news. This is just a, you know, Israel, obviously, and Iran and all of this stuff that's happening isn't the only crisis that this administration has been right, right smack dab in the middle of. Uh, Sean Davis reminded us that when Trump was president, Russia was not in Ukraine. Iran wasn't in Israel. There were no American or Israeli hostages in Gaza. Gas was affordable. There was no inflation and the economy did not suck. Oh, look at that. Remember? Oh, my gosh. You know what, though? <laughs> but he had mean tweets, Mock. So, I, know. I mean, those tweets were so mean. So, and he's an feel. insurrectionist. Right. So. My, my feel bads, they were <laughs> ouchy. J.D. Vance, Senator Vance, has done some in-depth studying about whether or, you know, the, all the money that we've spent on Ukraine thus far and any more that we might spend. He's done some pretty significant analysis about whether or not it's actually helping or will help. 
And he uh, did a big, he's done about a bunch of interviews about this, a bunch of write-ups about this, and now he's facing the heat. And so he was on uh, to talk about how pointless all of our tax money going to Ukraine actually is. And this was, I thought this was absolutely right. awesome. But I, I do want you to address that because the National Review uh, is basically saying that your solution to the problem of Russia invading a sovereign nation, Ukraine, is to just surrender. Are they wrong? No, look, my solution to the problem is to rebuild our own country. The reason that we're in this position, Jake, is because we're stretched way too thin. We're stretched way too thin. And the number of weapon systems that we need, the Ukraine needs, that Taiwan needs, that Israel needs, and we can't do all of these things at once. So when you're stretched too thin, you've got to focus and you've got to rebuild your own country. Let's take just one of those weapon systems that we're talking about, 155 millimeter artillery shells. The Russians currently have a five to one advantage over the Ukrainians. The Israelis will need this stuff. The Taiwanese need this stuff. And of course, America needs this stuff. Yeah, Can exactly. we possibly fight all of those conflicts at once? No, the math just doesn't make sense. So what we should be doing is with Ukraine, encouraging them to take a defensive posture, not these disastrous counteroffensive the Biden administration has been promoting. The counteroffensive is within Ukraine, though. The counteroffensive is within Ukraine. They're not seeking land from Russia. And in fact, just no, today, I, I, I'm not just, passing judgment on the morality of what they're doing. Of yeah. course, it's their territory, Jake, but you have to acknowledge military reality on the ground. The Democrat. Yeah. I mean, smart guy. Right. Yeah. And you and also have his eyes, right? Like yeah, his he, eyes are so pretty. He does have really pretty eyes. <laughs> but I mean, he also has to realize that like we need to build up our own military. And he said that in, mm -hmm. in in this whole discussion, he was talking about that too. I mean, he's talking about all these other conflicts that we're paying for and we're spread so thin. And while we're spreading ourselves so thin, our military is suffering mm -hmm. hard. I mean, we are sucking wind right now. And so what happens if we get attacked, which is like, it could be inevitable. What happens to us? What happens to our families? What happens to your kids and grandkids? What happens? I don't even like to think about it. Yeah. We don't like to think about it because we're not ready. Right. That's why we don't like it. And we could be and we should be because we give them shit tons of money and they're putting it in the wrong places. They're not spending it wisely, which is precisely his point. So this is why we should be ready. We should yeah. be so we should be beyond ready with the amount of money that we give these yahoos, but they're not putting it in the right places. It's and I still maintain that this is a European problem. This is not America. We've done enough. You know what I mean? Oh this my is God. a European yeah. issue. European, other Western European countries need to be taking care of business. Pony up. I, I yeah. totally agree. It's it. We've done. We have done more than enough. We've been overly generous. I mean, we're paying for their pensions for crying out loud. <laughs> right. And I'm not going to get social security. So I think we can probably we can cut them off at this point. Yeah. And happy tax day, everybody. Happy tax. Yeah. Day. Happy tax day. How are <laughs> you guys feeling? Feeling pretty good. <laughs> Um, mm -hmm. There are Jews, thankfully, that are waking up to how bad the Democrat Party actually is for them. And one of those Jews is Alan Dershowitz, surprisingly. So he is actually saying, I'm going to probably check out of this whole Democrat Party if this does not change. The Democratic Party is at risk of becoming the pro-Palestine, anti-Israel, pro Hamas party. And if it becomes that, it has an enemy in me and it has an enemy in many others who have long supported the Democratic Party. It's turning Israel from a bipartisan issue into a partisan issue. Not good for Israel, not good for America, not good for Democrats like me who have been generally loyal to the Democratic Party for so many years. We feel betrayed and we're not going to take it. So my oath to you, if the United States cuts back on military aid to Israel, if it doesn't go through with its obligation, legal, ethical, moral, to send these F-16 <sighs> or whatever fighter jets to Israel and denies them the right to protect themselves against Hamas, I will actively campaign against Democratic candidates all over the country. If uh, the administration in any way cuts back military aid from Israel, I will no longer be a member of the Democratic Party. Julie, we I, the fact that he's still a Democrat after I all know. the Democrats have done to show that they hate Jews and they hate Israel is absolutely staggering to me. And, you know, blacks and Hispanics copy and paste what I just said. Honestly, I mm -hmm. mean, they it's like, how? what else do they need to do? Focus on policy alone. And these people, I say these people, Democrats do not care about you. They do not care. They would sell their mothers for power. Period. Yep. Focus on policy. Look at the country. Dershowitz, get a grip. Like, I know, like this is the final straw. How many really? more straws need? Do there need to be? Like, there are no straws left. <laughs> there are no straws. 
I mean, I guess I'm glad it, you know, there was something that finally My opened his gosh. eyes, but good Lord. I know. Curio 23. Thank you. Curio says those that dislike the U S so much can visit Gitmo Bay resort. Indeed. I'm so glad that's still open by the way. Uh, and Robin Zecca. Thank you. Robin says she thinks the city council can do anything on the international stage. She can go to jail for first degree stupidity and terroristic threats, <laughs> right? Just, God, I can't get enough of that girl crying. Can't get enough. <clears throat> it's fantastic. Another thing that's happening today is that jury selection is starting in the criminal case against Trump with respect to the Stormy Daniels hush money thing. And so there's a lot of chatter, uh, obviously, about how that is going to go. And here is some ABC analysis. In a new world tomorrow, first former president ever to face a criminal trial, what should we expect? It's pretty remarkable. I mean, we're going to go through this procedural uh, act remarkable. of selecting a jury and, and something that many of us have sat through being on a jury before. And yet it's going to be for a trial of a former president of the United States. We've literally never seen this before. Oh, and Trump right. is going to use this courtroom and other courtrooms to come as really the centerpiece of his campaign. It's worked for him through the primary. I think the question now will be how that sliver of moderate voters, that sliver of persuadable voters will react to seeing him in this. That's city. what I don't want. And I, I don't know the answer to that either. Well, I mean, I hope it just pisses them off because they're, they're, they're trying to, we all know what they're trying to do. <clears throat> they're trying to distract from this, everything that's going on, like every single fire that's going on from Biden policies. And they're like, hey, you guys, look at the stripper. <laughs> look at the porn star. Look. <laughs> That's what they're trying to do. I mean, I, I like, is it's this not so obvious? Pathetic. It's is it not? so pathetic. It is. It's, it's just the, it's the dumbest thing. And I, it's almost, it's insulting to me as an American taxpayer. I'm, I'm insulted by this. I really am because I'm like, well, don't we have better things to do with our time than to try? I mean, you guys are so obvious at this point, Democrats, you're so obvious trying to, to pin something on this guy to make us all hate him. And what you're doing is you're just making us like him. They're making me like him even more. <laughs> That's what they're doing. Well, Honestly. and he's and he's right when he complains about this being election interference. New York state law requires him to be in court for every single part of this trial. They're expecting that it could last anywhere from six weeks to two months. And the only weekdays off that they will allow are Wednesdays. So every like starting today, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday of every single week for however long this lasts, you're going to see him in the courtroom. He's not going to be on the campaign trail. Now, hopefully he'll get some mic time as a result because the reporter I would think oh, would he'll be very interested. It. He'll use it. Exactly. And then Wednesdays, I, apparently he has the day off to do his campaigning stuff. But this is all so absurd. And Jonathan Turley explains why. Back with George Washington University law professor, uh, Jonathan Turley. And Jonathan, I want to get your take on what's most important for us to understand about all of these trials uh, to come and tomorrow's jury selection uh, uh, for Donald Trump. And while you're telling us, I'm going to put up this letter. This is from Stormy Daniels that President Trump posted. I know you've seen this. It says Stormy Daniels writes the fact of the matter is that each party to this alleged affair denied its existence in 2006, 2011, 2016, 2017, and now again in 2018. I'm not denying this affair because I was paid hush money. I'm denying the affair because it never happened, writes Stormy Daniels. Sir. Yeah, everything about this case is, in my view, legally absurd. You know, this case is basically a state misdemeanor that had run out on the statute of limitations. And Bragg was forced, uh, after he declined for a long time to bring this charge, uh, to do so. His predecessor rejected it. Uh, and so they took a, mis a dead misdemeanor and bootstrapped it into effectively trying a federal crime. But the federal crime here under election law was rejected by the Department of Justice. They did didn't feel that this should be charged. So you have this crazy case that's going to go forward and it's going to turn on the testimony of people like Michael Cohen. And Michael Cohen just recently had a judge call him a serial perjurer. Wow. Uh, and he's going to appear Fine. as the joke. center of this case. Unbelievable. Uh, Jonathan, great to see you this morning. Thanks very much. Professor Jonathan. Thank you. Listen, I know that we shouldn't get into like moral equivalence and all that kind of stuff, but wouldn't it be great if we just said to everybody in like Congress and the Senate, okay, if you've slept with a prostitute, please move forward, like step <laughs> forward. We want to see like literally 75% of them would step forward. Right. I mean, I just, so I, I hate all of these people. I hate them. <laughs> Well, last week we were talking to each other and to our audience and, and wondering, you know, 
will Trump testify and should he testify? And you and I were of the opinion that he should absolutely not. He shouldn't do that. However, he was asked whether or not he would. And here's what he said. You plan to testify in your trial in New York? Yeah, I would testify. Absolutely. It's a scam. <laughs> it's a scam. That's not a trial. That's not a trial. That's a scam. He if you read Jonathan it. Tarley, if you read Andy McCarthy, if you le- read the legal, they said there's not even a case there. I'm doing a podcast. He's going to testify, you guys. I know. I know. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll use it to campaign, you know? And I, like I said, I honestly think this is all going to work in his favor. How I hope not? so. The cut, we're in World War Three, you guys. Right? Oh, good Lord. I hope so. Andrea Viola, thank you. Andrea says, I went to the Trump rally in Pennsylvania Saturday. It was fantastic. What they are doing to this nation is vile, but we tolerate it. May God be with Trump today. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Here's something fun for everybody. Uh, Baron Trump apparently had dinner not terribly long ago with Patrick Bet David. And so they were talking about that on the Patrick Bet David show. And I just wanted to share it because Baron sounds like he is every bit like the the total star kid that we've all anticipated that he would be. I mean, we've all heard he speaks a zillion languages, like he's uber smart, um, but apparently he has quite a sense of humor as well. Here is Patrick Bet David's story. Podcast. Wow. I get an email saying Baron Trump wants to have dinner with you because he follows the content. We get there and Baron comes out <laughs> and we go sit down and have dinner with Baron. Now you got to realize I'm so curious who this kid is, right? I've never seen Tom laugh this hard for an hour and a half. And we just watched Baron run dinner with stories, oh entertainment, my God. everything. It's witty, smart, hilarious, you know, polit like he was smart on politics. He's like, you know, everybody's always gonna fight. There's left, there's right. I think uh one of the hardest I laugh is when he goes, look my cause all of a sudden the music just comes on loud, right, Jesse? And we're like, what the hell is that? He's like, my freaking dad's the DJ. <laughs> <laughs> All you see is uh, the president on his iPad, the lights in his face. Oh and nothing compares. <laughs> nothing <laughs> compares <laughs> to you. Yeah. Are we really? <laughs> and I love it because you look back, and it's, the, it's Donald Trump, the light on his thing, and and Barron's like, guys, like I'll be in my room, and the house is shaking. Like my dad plays the music loud. I Jump. cannot. That is the greatest thing. Listen, I think Trump is a good father, but um, I, I don't think that he's done a lot of like the heavy parenting lifting i think i think one thing there's he's done a lot of good things in his life trump but i think one of the things that he's done really well is he's picked good mothers for his children every single mother that he's had for his children have been exceptional hands-on effective mothers they've been present they've been great like the and that matters it matters well, and because I think he has played a part in that in setting expectations totally. for his kids, all of whom have wildly exceeded, I would think, what any parents' expectations of totally. their kids would be. They well, are totally. all superstars in their own right. Right. But I but I think that the his the mothers have all been there and they've been present and they've been great moms. And I mean, somebody's I know somebody's saying boarding schools, but I mean, like the mom, okay, whatever. I don't care where they went to school. I'm just saying those mothers are good mothers and he's a good father too, but they are, you can tell they, they know that they're loved. Those kids know that they're loved. They they know that they're obviously taken care of, but like that matters when you have, it's like, it's not like, I don't think that Melania pawned that kid off on a nanny. Oh no, she didn't. She was present and that matters. And you can tell because all, I mean, every single one of his kids is smart. Yeah. They're They're amazing. They're not, they're not, they're not a freaking Hunter Biden or an Ashley Biden. I know, right? Compare and contrast. Yes, compare the and families. contrast. It's, there's no comparison in the two families. None. Yep. In case anybody was wondering what the Lincoln Project is up to lately, they are now uh, going after RFK Jr. and hard. And they're releasing some really craptacular ads about him. Just look at the nastiness from this one. He was a profiling courage. Robert Kennedy spoke to our better angels, Ask tragic what? leaders who were the best of America. Ask what you can do for your country. Robert Kennedy Jr. is a different kind of tragedy. A longtime heroin addict, Kennedy's an anti-vaxxer extremist who thinks all vaccines oh are dangerous. There's no vaccine that Not is, right. you know, safe and effective. No vaccines? Bring back polio. Measles, whooping cough. COVID 19, there's some argument that it is ethnically targeted. Ethnically targeted? 
That's racist and crazy. <laughs> if you believe COVID was a conspiracy, if you're an anti-vaxxer, RFK Jr. is your guy. There's no vaccine that is, you know, safe and effective. RFK Jr., a right-wing nut. Look at that picture. It's so ridiculous. Listen, I mean, do I, people I, believe that? Yeah, they do on the left. And he's not right wing. Oh That's what so they want it. It's like the Lincoln Prize. I mean, it's George Conway, you guys. What do you expect <laughs> from George freaking Conway, right? <laughs> and all the people that founded the Lincoln Project are all these like establishment sleaze balls. Sleaze, yeah, like establish, establishment sleaze ball Republican hacks that are, are like, I don't like they're just the establishment. I Oh God, they're yeah. awful. And to try to paint him as a right wing, ha like a right winger, I it's they're scared. They he, are scared. Yeah, but he's not right wing. He's not a right wing nut at all. He's actually more left wing in so many different ways than right wing. But man, they are scared, aren't they? Mm -hmm. I just thought that was such a hilarious ad, and it mm -hmm. had to be shared. Uh, there's question. We've been talking about it a lot about whether or not there are going to be debates. I think you you still think that there will not be. You think no. you think there's no, no way Biden is showing no up. No way in hell. I maintain be some hope that there will be debates. Um, we've got a few clips to share on that and people talking about it. This first one, I don't know who Chris Wallace is talking to. I I know we've seen her before, but I don't. I never remember her name. It's not important because she's not important. But she's like she throws out as many insults about Trump as she can to talk about whether or not there's going to be a debate. Given Trump's behavior back in the 2020 debate, which I remember very vividly, and his penchant for telling untruths, okay. how do you feel oh about God. the news media pushing for debates? Listen, I mean, they have to, right? This is a tradition uh, for news organizations to want to debate. There are lots of eyeballs uh, that go into it. But I think we are trying to, like, graft normal uh, political forums into abnormal times and an abnormal candidate. Trump is a liar and he's a conspiracy theorist oh uh, as well. And I think, you know, news organizations should consider maybe Maybe there shouldn't be debates at this point, given who Donald Trump is as a candidate. Jonah, what do you? This is what they're going to do. Well, I and mean, he's he Joe Biden lies all the time. So whenever uh -huh. they are like Trump's a big liar, I'm like, are you serious? Yeah, he plagiarized his way through life. But, oh you know, God. let's let's paint Trump as the liar. Actually, uh, Trump is the truth teller, which is why they hate him. Mm. They hate Trump because he he just like burst onto the scene and he started calling everybody out. And that is precisely why they hate him and they want him to go away. It's because he's like the let let's drain the swamp, let's get rid of all these these actual liars, and they hate him for it. They yeah. can't stand him. So yeah, this it's again, it's that whole projection thing. And the only reason they don't want to, we all know why they don't want him to debate because he can't do it. He can't. Exactly. Um, so Jackie Heinrich was talking to a Democratic strategist about whether he th thinks that their debate th these debates are going to happen, and his take was pretty interesting. Last word. Uh, do you think that that President Biden would be able to use a debate to his advantage? Do you or do you think it's a bigger risk for him? Just candidly, I mean, this is public speaking has never been his forte. Right. Right. Since 1972. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, so uh, lead, I'll make the lead pipe guarantee right now. There will be three presidential debates. Oh my They'll God. be in late September and October. Republicans have lowered the bar on Joe Biden's performance so much that when he did the State of the Union and he knocked it out of the park, people were kind of shocked. Did he knock it out of the park? He's a lot. He's he's a lot better than a lot of folks give him credit for. I think okay. he'll do great in these debates. Donald Trump slips up quite a bit, too. Well, I, I feel for whoever has to moderate it, because that, that's going to be a, a tough, a yeah. tough thing to tackle. Uh, Joe Pinion. <laughs> OK, then, you know, maybe you're right, Mock. Maybe they'll let him do it based on some Yahoo like this guy saying it, that he can do better than people think that we don't give him enough credit. OK, well, then put him out there. I mean, I, I can't tell, like, if he's trying to convince himself to believe what he's saying or if Democrats really have gotten themselves to a place where they believe because of the State of the Union and how hopped up. Biden was that night and how angry Biden came out full force. They really believe that he could do a good job. He was I, reading. I don't know. He was reading a teleprompter. It wasn't like he was. I mean, you put him in a situation where he's in the press in the press room answering yeah. questions. He's a complete and utter disaster. Yeah, he cannot do anything off the cuff. He can't. 
So it's a it's a different ball game when you're reading a teleprompter poorly, I might add, mm. than when you're on a stage debating Donald Trump and or RFK. Yeah. It will be a disaster, and I hope it happens. God, God I, I hope, hope so happens. too. I hope so too. Bill Maher and uh, Bill Maher was talking about this on his show. Pierce Morgan was one of the panelists, and here was what Jim they Kessler. Said. Really appreciate your time. We're out of time, guys. Appreciate hope to have you back Thanks soon. You. Thanks. I think it's going to be bad on Biden if he goes into the debate. I mean, I've said it before. They're almost the same age, but for some reason, Trump just doesn't present as old and feeble, and he does. He, he looks. He kind of looks the same. He's Trump a, would destroy, destroy him in a live debate. It destroy would, him. He would destroy said. Biden in a live debate. I, I've got no. I mean, how many live press conferences has Joe Biden? Oh. Exactly. Right. Well. Yeah, that's I true. mean, there's a reason they don't put him in front of a large gathering of the media right. for a sustained period of time taking questions. Right. There's a reason. Okay. And then William yep. Shatner is like 105. Did you see him? I know, he's, he looks great. He's a, I mean, he's remarkable. <laughs> I said that to my husband the other day. I'm like, that dude, he's, I think he's like actually 90. I'm not even kidding. I really I, think he is like 90. I think you're right. I think he might be older than 90, isn't he's he? He's remarkable. We got to look it up. Because you guys, he's 93. 93. Yeah. Did you see him? 93. He should run for president. He should. It's he's just about ready. <laughs> he's Maybe like, cook him a little couple more years and he'll be ready. He's obligated at this point <laughs> to run for president. He looks amazing. What is he I doing? Know. Oh my god. Going to space. Maybe that's is that helped. what it is? I, I don't know. He just I don't get it. Amazing. Yeah, it is amazing. So we'll see. I, I don't know. You know, we just have to wait and see. Like a, it's a just a waiting game. Um, meanwhile, there is some activity on the Republican side in Congress trying to pass legislation that would, I know this is, sounds ridiculous, but it would require states to relieve themselves of illegal citizens from their voter rolls. And this is, it's already illegal for non-U.S. citizens to vote in federal elections. But Apparently, obviously, that's still happening. And so we allege we ostensibly need new legislation to say, hey, states, don't do that. Don't let them do that. And there will be Democrats who fight this, which is hilarious. Crazy. So Simone Sanders uh, was talking on her show about how mean and unreasonable voter ID is yeah, and how and, and when she's talking about it in this context, it sounds so insane because she's saying, oh, yeah, there's going to they're going to make these states remove these alleles from their voter registrations. And so what are they going to do? Are they just going to, like, demand to see their papers? Well, yes, you should have to prove that you are a citizen in order to vote. Exactly. Yes. This is yeah. not mean. This is not disenfranchising this is common freaking sense and the follow-up conversation is so racist i just like these oh people God. have no idea how racist they are right no idea they are completely racist mm -hmm. here is simone and her team this is um and her last i feel like i said this all the time this is insane because it is already oh it is it is not legal to vote if you are not a citizen of the United yeah. States of America. Right. Congress has already, like, they already passed legislation for that way back before, you know, I could even, you know, go to school, okay? Right. Back in the, like, the 90s, I think they did this, right, Michael? Oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> Michael's old enough to be my father. We joke about this all the time. Yeah, so now, uh, according to, after, you know, Donald Trump and his insurrection buddy, the Speaker of the House, Mike Johnson, after they had their meeting, now, apparently, House Republicans are going to pursue legislation requiring proof of citizenship to vote my my question is okay who's who, so we're going to show proof to miss Susie at the at the right. at the at the polling place yes how is miss Susie going to verify are we asking people to bring their papers this is america so i just want to i just want to know is 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 this what all of the house republicans want to lay their chips on even the yes. 18 the sitting districts that joe biden won in 2020 what strikes yes. me is this is the long tail of a long time republican effort to make it harder to vote because oh they God. know that some of those Here requirements you know having to show a license um they disproportionately impact communities of color and they dis what's interesting How? is they also disproportionately impact older americans oh yes right yes, so yes. and that's the part that yeah. you would think that republicans would be more attuned to strategically to acquire how so how, dumb. how does requiring a license or any sort of ID disproportionately affect people of color or older people? I don't understand. That's racist and ageist. Mm -hmm. is and what when it you is. ask black people if they are able to get an ID, uh -huh. they look at you like you're out of your mind. They look at They're you like, like you're racist. Of course I can get ID. I have ID. Yeah. I use it for absolutely everything because I'm required to. 
because I'm not an idiot because no. of my skin color, you racist. So Miss Susie at the table there bringing that up is an actual racist. All of them are like these people have no idea how racist they are and how racist they sound when they say that garbage. It's it's ridiculous. And you're right. It's pandering. It's pandering. Oh, it's totally pandering. I don't know when this clip is. Well, I guess I do because the date is on it. So f uh, just a month ago, uh, Wesley Hunt talked about voter ID and voting rights in America. And I I, he's him. so awesome. I absolutely guys. love him. So I've been like kind of holding this clip, waiting for the right time to share it. And that time is right now. I part out loud, which I tend to do. I have a lot of respect for John Lewis, but the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act is not about protecting voting rights. It's about solidifying Democrat power nationally. It's about federal control over state and local elections, which, by the way, is unconstitutional. It's about diminishing the security of our elections. And voter integrity laws aren't discriminatory. They are required for a functioning constitutional republic. I'm going to tell you today, I categorically reject the soft bigotry of low expectations. Black Americans and people of color are proud. We expect more of ourselves. That's what black excellence really means to me. Mm -hmm. And above all else, we don't need a new solution to a problem that doesn't exist. Let me be clear. Making it to the polls to vote in person with an ID in this country today is a very low bar. <laughs> Extremely low bar. We can do it. White people can do it. Black people can do it. Americans can do it. Exactly. And we should all want that for free and fair elections. If you want to be on the right side of history, you should reject, reject the Democrats' party's attempt to wind the clock back 70 years. Because I'm sitting right here in front of you, and I'm here to tell you we've come a long way. Let's continue this progress. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, sir, for having me. Amen. I love Preach him. it. Preach. I love him so much. And I just, I love, the, I love that cadence that he uses when he gets mm -hmm. going. Yeah, his voice. So, so it's, great. It's delicious. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So delicious. Teresa Raimondo, thank you. Teresa says, Chris Wallace is so distant from his father as a journalist. Oh, my God, right? Yeah. And the bimbo he is talking to is full of nonsense. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. I still don't remember her name. I just heard it. Nobody and cares. It. It's gone. Nobody, nobody really cares. <laughs> and Teresa also says, I was gone all last week for my job, and I missed you guys a great deal. Well, we're we missed glad you, you're back, Teresa. All right, uh, let's move on to some random things that I've just thrown together <laughs> because that's that's what we do here. And uh, first, we're going to start off with a picture that I want to see if you notice anything odd about the picture. Do you notice anything odd about this picture from the Situation Room this weekend? Do I notice anything odd? Well, I mean. I mean, obviously, it's a cast of morons. Yeah, you know that's, that would be the thing that I noticed the most. He looks confused, but he always looks confused. It's not really odd to see how confused he looks. Uh, but do you think it's odd, or is it just me, that there are name tags in the Situation Room in case Joe Biden doesn't remember his own freaking national security team? Are they, and they're faced the other way. Well, they're face both, you know, there's names on both are sides. They, are they dual sided? At okay. him. They're faced at him. So he can, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I think that's freaking weird. Yeah. That, oh, that's really weird. Yeah. That's really super weird. Okay. All right. I thought maybe it was for if, if, if like for people taking pictures for media, if they were like, for instance, we're seeing this right now. And so they will, will be able to identify who these people are at the table. So that, and that was what came okay, to my mind. Could be fair, but it's fair. It, but listen, I think that your, your theory has, it holds more water. It definitely well, holds. The only reason is because if you look at previous photos from the situation room with previous presidents, they do have the name plates, but they face like nameplates do, they face you and then out towards like whoever is across from you. They don't all face the president because you would sure. think the president knows his own people. I'm not sure why they would have nameplates to begin with. I don't I really just, know either, but really maybe it goes know. back you to your idea that it's for the press. It's, it's for, for photos. the press. Yeah, I like <laughs> Gigi girl asked, is she coloring? Yes, she is. <laughs> Somebody She's actually posted on Twitter, like they took this picture and then on a side by side, they put a picture of like penises being drawn by Kamala. <laughs> <laughs> like saying, it makes here's sense. what she's drawing. Here's what she's doing. It makes complete sense. Yeah, totally. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, well, good. I just wanted to ask that question because I a thought little, it was weird. A little weird. 
Yeah. And uh, mm-hmm. wanted to share that. And because I had to see the next clip, you all need to see the next clip with oh, me. I think I know. This what is what it goes is. on in the uh, press conference. Well, she has nothing intelligent to add. <laughs> nothing, nothing intelligent. I didn't even I'm surprised include that clip. You should have included it. I, I can't believe you didn't include it. So I'll just like add that in there. She has <laughs> nothing intelligent, but I'm glad that they're having fun. When World War Three is <laughs> looming. Curio twenty three. Thank you. Curio says Obamacare federally mandated ID so people won't cheat the system. Huh? That's racist. Clearly. Yeah, it is. Uh, Leslie L. Thank you. Leslie L. says people use IDs for alcohol and cigarettes. So trust me, people already have licenses and state IDs. Of course, of they, course do. they do. I mean, of course, this is what's so crazy about this whole argument. It's a talking point. It's a it's a fear tactic. That's yeah. all it is. Yep. Uh, remember how last week we played a montage, probably like a minute and a half long of Joe Biden claiming to be part of like 17 other cultures. Yeah, there was Persian culture. There was Italian. There was Irish. There was mm-hmm. like the black community. There was the yeah, uh, you name it. He was part of it. Yeah. And I guess he sent along the message to Kamala because now she's doing the same thing. Here's what she said when the Japanese uh, oh, is it a God. president or is it a prime minister? Prime min- I think it's a prime minister. Okay. Here's what she said when the Japanese guy was in town <laughs> dude. last week. Mr. Prime Minister, we are so grateful for your commitment to our alliance. And I will say as a proud daughter of California, I grew up surrounded by Japanese American culture oh, and of history. Did. Yeah. Really? Did you though? Yeah, did you? she did. She basically is Japanese. She's <laughs> Jap- and, and like the 14 other cultures that she is and how she, that's how she got elected is. Konnichiwa. Other- Konnichiwa yeah. Kamala. What does that mean? What is Konnichiwa? Hi. Hi. It's what they said when I lived in Japan and we would uh-huh. go to the off base McDonald's, which were right. Japanese. They all stop what they're doing. All the workers in and the McDonald's. Say, Konnichiwa. Ohio I feel like gozaimasu. that's such a, such no, a long. Wait a minute. I'm wrong. Cause they would say Ohio Gozaima. So Konnichiwa. Is that high or is that a way of because saying Because that's such a you. long, it's a long way, a convoluted way to say hi, don't you think? <laughs> I'd be like, can y'all shorten that a little bit? <gasps> I have to look it up now. Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Is, is that, that high or is it thank you? Yeah. No, it's the greeting. It's the greeting. Yeah. Scarlett says that was, that's high. Yeah, yeah that's high. It's just, it's so long, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's pretty long. It's Seems pretty like long. a lot of work. A lot of Maybe work. that's why they talk so fast. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, this I saw on uh, TikTok and Instagram. It was making the rounds. This is for real. This is not satirical. This is not a parody. This is a public defender in Seattle. This person is a complete freak of nature. And I don't care who gets mad at me for saying that. When you see. Oh, I'll say it. And when you hear this person speak. Uh-huh. I, I cannot a believe man. this is a it's taxpayer-funded a yeah. public defender. Right. Just check this out. Oh, let me check on that. Yeah, yeah. Stephanie. So that is no oh, Stephanie. Look at the nipples, you guys. Oh, God, do better. I mean, do better. <coughs> oh, my comment God. about my client? Yeah, I just met her. She's really nice. She's really smart. <laughs> she sounds God. like she's got the right idea like about Hulk things. I really support what she's up to, and I think it's fabulous. In the world. God, it, do you, she's accused of, what is it, criminal trespass. In the first degree. I cannot. Yes. Okay. Is she innocent or guilty? She's innocent, of course. She's innocent, okay. Well, she's caught on video being arrested and protesting and allegedly protesting. This is... So I'm trying to get all sides. So I'm well, what are we doing? Is, but not guilty. My name is Stephanie Mueller. I'm in the uh, directory for the Washington State Bar Association. What in the world? Okay. Stephanie, thank you for your time. At this point, it, your client is being arraigned, though. It's all <laughs> just happening. It, her, her hearing is over. Got it. It's done. What are we all doing? Right, do you know what her next court date is? What are we I doing? Do. Do you, I'd like to maybe I, just keep tabs if they're... Uh, uh-huh. What are the booths, though? Why? why? Yeah. Well, seriously. You, could you tell me when that is? No. Oh, Take okay. care. Thank okay. you, Stephanie. Make it go away. Only a gigantic dude could handle walking around with those giant <laughs> bolt-ons. Seriously. Like Why I, do they have to be at attention too? Like gross. They're, well, cause doing? they're, cause they're fake and all oh fake God. ones are at attention because listen, I've known women with the fake ones. And when you lay down, 
they, they don't, a, they, they don't lay down. They don't fall. They stay straight up. So with boobs like that, I mean, wow. Giant but bolt gotta, ons. It's, I mean, do they, are, are they like you, put on with nipples that are constantly at attention? I guess. But I mean, like it's, he's got to do some more to try to pass. Like the do something not with your voice, it. the voice. He sounds like Hulk Hogan, right? It's, it's just so stupid. <laughs> like, I cannot believe this is our world. And we're supposed to take that person seriously. Yeah, Come exactly. On. I mean, give me a right. break. Stephanie, <laughs> Stephanie mom says not a Stephanie. F yeah, F Stephanie. S. <laughs> exactly. Um, also this happened at an LGBTQ event. There was apparently a volunteer dance troupe, um, who wears very, it's called the borderline dance team and they wear very, very patriotic gear. And because this was an LGBT group, these volunteer dancers were ordered to remove their American flag t-shirts because it was going to trigger the organizers apparently because of what's going on in Palestine and the LGBTQ community. Uh, what does an American flag have to do with that? So that if you're, is exactly right. If you are a dude and you sleep with dudes, or if you're a woman and you sleep with women, if you're like, if you're gay and transgender, what does, what does the American flag have to do with you sleeping with somebody of the same sex or you cutting your ding dong off. I don't, I'm sorry. Somebody's <laughs> going to have to explain. Question. I don't understand what that has to do. The American flag has to do with that. If you're triggered by the American flag, GTFO, right? You do not Bye. belong here. Help, let me help Gaza. you buy your ticket. Yeah. We'll, we'll send you to Gaza. We will crowdfund. I'm pretty sure that our, our group here, our community here will help crowdfund for those mm -hmm. people to go to Gaza. I'm sure they'll treat you lovely there. As a gay person, as a transgender, I'm sure they will. Yep. Lori Mazamuro, thank you. Lori says, Ohio Gozaimas is good morning and Konichiwa is good afternoon. Okay, that makes sense. Wait, Konichiwa is good afternoon? Yeah. Wait, what's, what's good Ohio morning? Ohio Gozaimas is good morning. I've never heard that before. Yeah, that's what I would hear in the McDonald's, mostly. I don't know well, why then, I was going there in the morning, but like that's what I was always hearing. Ohio wait, Gozaimas. Then what is high? That, both of those are high. They just don't, they just don't say hi. They just um, don't go hi. Maybe. Well, I actually think they say like they shorten it to Ohio. Really? Ohio goes, Cause normally if they're saying Ohio goes, I must norm, then sometimes they'll say Ohio, you know what I mean? Oh, and that's like the okay. high version. Maybe right. I could be remembering this wrong. It's okay. been a long time very since I lived in Japan. Okay. All right. A very long time. I like anyways, but by, by the way, I really like their uniforms. Those are cute. I Oh, they're totally how this would Super trigger cute. anybody. It doesn't. I would if be it like, does, you should like leave the country for I real. I immediately would be like wanting to talk to those girls, be like, oh my God, I love your outfits. Those are so cute. Right? Adorable. So cute. Mm -hmm. Alexander, thank you. Alexander says, My dad lives in Seattle and carries. Plus, he has two giant dogs that look terrifying for this exact reason and many other reasons as well. Yeah, I mean, that place is wow. Can you imagine if that dude walked into a women's restroom? Oh, <gasps> And he probably does. Yeah, he totally does. You know he does. He identifies as a woman. Can you He's imagine? He's got to be like six eight. Mm -hmm. That guy. He's probably going to become a swimmer next, and like want to compete against my fourteen year old. That's totally fair, you guys. Totally fair. Exactly. Yeah. Um, also, I spent Saturday night at my favorite neighbor's house, and they were very, very lovely to me. They took care of me while my boys were playing lacrosse, and they fed me dinner, and we watched things on TV and just Aww. chatted, and it was great. And one Sweet. of the things that my neighbor Elliot told me, because he's a huge fan of the White Stripes, and specifically Jack White. Jack White posted such a dumb thing on Instagram that Elliot, my BFF Elliot, unfollowed him, which is a big deal for Elliot because he's a huge, huge fan of Jack White. But when you see what Jack White posted and how insanely stupid it is, you'll understand. Jack White is very upset about the, the dirt that is under Mount Rushmore. Okay. And so he said, this is for real. He's not kidding. So is this all this rubble, the remnants of the sculpting of Mount Rushmore? So nobody's going to clean this up we as a people are just going to let this lay here forever. Oh my God. Was this already there or is this the largest monument to littering that the world has ever seen? Is this what Guts and Borglum originally envisioned? Just chip away at the rock and leave all the debris below? Did he think that this was not his problem? I don't see any other large piles of chip stones and rubble around this area in the wide shots. Don't get me started on the fact that this was native land and a sacred mountain. I also don't want to hear about how the carving was supposed to be full-bodied presidents or 
the, uh, the back of it has a secret room. I don't care about that part. I specifically want to know who's going to clean this up, when, how, and then we can ask why. I think that first comment says it all. Right? That's that why first, I included it. Because I was that, like... That first comment is perfect. Because seriously, is this guy... This guy has got to be on drugs, right? I, I don't He's, know. He has to be. Because that is like, what is his deal? Is he okay? Is I, Jack White... Right? Okay? Is Jack White okay? He's not okay. He's not okay. He can't no. be okay. No. Because mm -mm. this is what he actually said. And most of the comments were like, dude... Get a grip. What are you doing? Like, how is this what you're upset about? Yeah. I mean, listen, these are the people that when the zombie apocalypse actually happens, they're going to go first. <laughs> it's, you know, I just, this is when it's, it'll all just take care of itself. You know what I mean? Also, before we get to DDs, which I don't think you even remember that you have two, but you do. There's two. I do? I have two? Yes. And you'll see oh. both of them because they're both TikToks. Okay. Uh <laughs> I must have sent you one earlier in the weekend you did. or something. You I did. did? Okay. All you right. did. It was like the weird jean underwear. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> I totally forgot about that. Yes. Because of our, our meet and greet. Yes. Okay. Yes. So we have both of those. But before we get to those, I just <laughs> I had to share this like old people uh, video that I saw that was so freaking cute. And it's about how you can holla at a prospective mate. Okay. This guy's going to show you how you do it. All right. And it's precious. And that's right now. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I love him. That was so cute. Yeah, I love him. So cute. So cute. Yeah. Um, okay. So which before which we get to first? do these, okay. uh, because they are talks, I would just like to remind everybody to visit mypillow.com slash totally. Shits. Because that is who sponsors my pillow time. Get some slides. Get some slides, you guys. Okay, They're so which one? Fifty for the white ones. Which one is first? Are we gonna do the shorts first? Yeah, we can do okay. that. Okay, I found what Mock and I are gonna wear for our meet and greet. Are you guys ready? <laughs> like, cause, I have not we, agreed to this. I think because I think we like to kind of sort of uh, coordinate, maybe not match entirely because we're not matchy matchy because we're not thirteen, you guys. But except thought, when it happens on accident. <laughs> happen all the time on accident we do match a lot but i thought <laughs> this would be perfect i mean these are great and they're at walmart they're very inexpensive so we should right, get these great models. news the bigger size of can my you hear it came in today if yeah. this xl okay. doesn't fit me i am calling the police the fact that this is an xl is criminal hi 911 one wrong move and you are gonna see what i had for breakfast one wrong move and you're gonna think we're at arby's i just can't stop thinking about like the product developers at walmart when they're like sitting around at the table and they're like you know what's really gonna blow their tits off honestly you know what i do love is just like the feeling of metal teeth on my chain zippers like going this way because i had to move my meat curtains over to this side so they would fit comfortably in the bed of wood Oh my God. <laughs> the metal zipper up my butt crack is like starting to ferment. I can't have zippers here because I need to like, get some air. Tell me how my lips are supposed to be with no air. Walmart, good day. Goodbye. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. You gave me a UTI. Guys, great news. <laughs> Who wears this crap? Who wears this? Oh my God. I died. I love that I, so much. Honestly, I mean, who who's buying that? <laughs> Bruce is like, I like it. Bruce wants us to wear them. Bruce, <laughs> Bruce votes yes. Okay, Bruce. We took that into consideration. We'll idea. think about it. We'll totally think about it. Okay. <laughs> and then the my other DD is I want to do this with, it would have to probably be Linus. Our cow There's Linus. no way you're going to do this because you would never allow this mess in your house. I know oh. you <laughs> Because <laughs> the, the first thing I said is my husband loves this account. He loves it so much. And I'm like, you should totally do this. But the only problem is, like, how does he keep the cow from crapping in the house? Because, listen, they are uncontrollable when it comes to the poopiness, you know? So, you know, this cow has pooped in his house. And they don't, and like, crouch or anything. They just let it out. They, they just let, let it, it out. go, and it splatters. Oh okay? My God. So, this is the... I'm just being honest. And so, I don't know how this doesn't happen. I mean, it's a beautiful cow, and I would do this, too, but there is no controlling the poopiness. No. <laughs> He's eating lunch with them. It's lunch. It's Bruce, you guys. His name is Bruce. Bruce. He doesn't care. He's going to eat everything. Bruce. Like, Bruce, no. I love him. 
He's like, please give me the whole entire thing of mayonnaise. I would like to partake. Oh my God. I just keep thinking about how expensive all that food is. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. He has one where he, um, you can see the, the account, but he has one where he actually, oh God, he goes jogging with him. He brushes his teeth with a giant toothbrush. Oh he, my God. And he eats it. Like, oh, after, he eats everything. Oh God. He eats everything. <laughs> they, they do. They, they want to eat everything. I don't think people realize how cows are. They're like gigantic dogs. They want to eat all the things. Oh, potato chips. Look. Oh, look. I would like to have some of those, Dad. Thank you. Look at their tongues. Oh, my God. Uh huh. He's like, what else is on here that I can eat? Look at the mess. <laughs> Anyways, it's Bruce, you guys. You should check out Bruce. Oh, my gosh. That was amazing. Yeah. All there right. It is time for some talks now. I have to say, remember when we um, played that clip of Sage Steele, who posted it voluntarily, like her embarrassing moment with Dana right. White, where she mistook mm -hmm. him for Joe Rogan. Yeah. And she was just like, you know what? I screwed up. I'm going to put this out there and it's embarrassing AF, but I'm still going to own it. Totally. This woman reminded me of that. And this is a woman who in the middle of being interviewed on a podcast, her entire wig falls off. Oh no. And her reaction is the greatest thing ever. People be like, God can't disappoint you. You know, he, he he's a good, good father. He is, you know, and, and he he has the best intentions for you. His yeah. plans are to prosper you. Yeah. Bring you to an expected end. But your life does not. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bruh, we gonna keep this <laughs> nigga. I can't even reach him, bro. Uh, this is, look at him. <laughs> this is beyond embarrassing. Wait a oh my gosh. It gets better and better. Look at him. Look at him. I mean, he's like dying. He's dying. He's like, wait a minute. Everybody was like, <laughs> he puts it right back on. So <laughs> wait till she gets to the end. Just wait, listen. Do have a lot of hair. Um, yes, yeah, she she really do. I do. I traveling. You just you need something for, for the moment. I couldn't even reach it, and that's sometimes what the Lord do. You know, it's, it, he, he just set up things where you just don't know, but you trust the moment. You gonna keep this? I'm gonna keep it. Jesus. I mean, she set us. it up by talking about God. Tell me when you press upload. Father. <laughs> She set it up by talking about God, and then he was like, "Yeah, I'm here. I'm gonna take that. I'm gonna take that wig off your head." Uh -huh. I love her for that. I love uh -huh. both of them for that. It yeah, was that amazing. Was pretty funny. It was awesome. Oh my god, humility. I love it. <laughs> Speaking of cows, um, because and I know you love them. I love them. I don't know how your cows drink, um, but this apparently is an unusual way for a cow to drink. This cow nice. basically tries to drown itself with every beverage. Um, and here is an example. You're gonna chug. The thing we can do with this time. Just take your time with this one. Let me see. They do drink really weird. Cows do. You can but this must be extra time. weird because it's a, like a made video for it. So yeah. Ready? His name is Chug. Let's see what happens. Back up real quick. Son. Back up. Back up. No, 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 no. Back up. Back up. Back up. Back up. Oh, yeah. God damn it, That's a little chug. Oh my God. He's so thirsty. And yeah, they have to they... remind him to get up and breathe. Yeah, that's a little extreme. Uh, like they do shove their faces in there and their snoots. 
Put your head up. <sighs> he won't stop. Yeah. I mean, they. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that hilarious? Bless his heart. I am worried about him, too. I'm worried about him, William. I know. That's not normal. That yeah, doesn't he, seem normal. They got to. They got to always supervise that one because he's a little <laughs> off. Yeah, because they do. They, they 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 suck it in with their snoots. That's how they don't drink like dogs. Dogs are very inefficient in the way they drink. Yeah. Cows like are kind of like <laughs> that's how they do it. They slurp it with their big snoots. And so that one was a little different. Yeah. Oh, my God. That God bless him. <laughs> Insane. I love him. <laughs> um, also. <laughs> I love this woman because she clearly wants to get a dog. And so, but she's, you know, it's like an expense. There's responsibilities. So right. she's decided she's going to play a game where she's going to throw something into a cup far away. And if she makes it, she gets the dog, right? Yes. But she has an unexpected uh, opposition. You'll see. Should I get a dog? <laughs> <laughs> Should I get a dog? The cat's like, nope, nope, that's not going to happen, please. <laughs> no, no. Okay, question for you. Yes. When you make the um, the biscuits the, in the the pop up biscuits, you know that they, they like the pop, what are they called? Like the the biscuits out of the can. Yeah, but what are the, what's the who makes those? Um, Pills Pillsbury. Yes, 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 the, yes. Those yes. biscuits, and you know, my favorite thing is to pop the can. I love popping the can. I love it. Really? And so Ron always lets me do it. Yeah, it's all, it's my favorite thing. I love it. It's like a Jack in the Box. I'm it kind of I mean, is, but I, I don't like Jack in the Boxes at all. Yeah. I hate them. And so I don't know why I like the popping so much, the popping of the dough. But I do like it. But this woman, <laughs> she clearly does not because she feels like they're Jack in the Boxes. Yeah. And so the end of this is my favorite thing because she's so nervous. <laughs> oh, my God. She's so nervous. It's not gonna pop when you take the label off. That has nothing to do with it. It really you gotta, kind of like, does, though, most of the time. Gotta, so she's like, hit. what the hell? She's, no, the label's not gonna do it. You have the paper's not gonna <laughs> It is the paper because you start to pull off the seal. It never it never does it. The seal like the seal, yeah, but like I have to always push the thing and like and then you it pops. do yeah oh, no. i just unwrap and it goes poof, and it's really? my favorite i okay. love it so much <laughs> Will, william is tracking with the woman yeah i mean if people get freak out they freak out yeah i love that so much also do you remember this the precious precious raccoon the baby that i showed you guys last week who covers his eyes when yes. he's afraid yeah there's an update and he's he's getting a little bit less scared oh my god i mean he's just ah look at him Good morning, everybody. He's precious. I just wanted to give you guys an update. What you doing? Oh, God, he's so adorable. What you doing? He's still like this. He really oh, is cute. That. So, and I just, I, I, so I've got to answer a few questions. I'll post the things up there, but. Oh my God, he's, he's tiny. He's not covering his eyes because I have a scary camera in front of his face. This isn't what's scaring him. It's, 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 it's the environment. It's me. It's anything. I am not his mother. So without the camera, he does the same thing. I don't have a light on either. There's no light on my camera. This is the light from the actual kitchen. They're not nocturnal. I'm going to answer a few other questions. Uh, it's a myth. You will Look see raccoons foot. out. In the I know it's so cute. Out in the daytime does not mean they have rabies. His little foot, just like opossums, but he's frightened. So he was alone. Imagine getting, you know, uh, being left alone. His mother. Something probably happened. To the mother. We're we're thinking car. Could have been a dog. The neighbor said there are dogs. Oh, my God. Um, could have killed mom. So after that happens, they start climbing out of the, the nest looking for, what was that? Looking for uh, food. So the sibling made it out already of the nest, fell out of the tree, a big pine tree. They found the baby, the sibling. I told them there's never just one. Keep an eye out. So when I got the sibling, he was pretty skinny, pretty dehydrated, pretty emaciated. So they went back, and then two days later, sure enough, there's this one. So we don't know what he had to defend himself. I know. Oh 
Oh, isn't he so sweet? He's very sweet. Oh my god! You can never go back out in the wild. No, she's gonna let him out. Is she? Um, okay. In fact, the rest of that video, I know it's kind of long, but she she basically ends up saying, you know, we're going to rehab him. And then when he's ready, he's going into the wild because that's what oh her rehab center does. OK. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, OK. What did I? Oh, Clint Eastwood, you guys. He is still alive. He's 94. Look at this precious, precious man. Is Look he at 94? Him. I think he is. 93. I mean, he's, you know, he's... I love him. He's not quite William Shatner from a fitness level standpoint, but yeah, the fact that he remains on Earth makes yeah. me very happy. He, Clint Eastwood and Gene Hackman are, like, on the same level at the yes. point. They're around okay. the same age, <laughs> I and, I, and I love them both. They, they're kind of up there in the same place for me. I just love them. I kind of, I mean, it's nice that he's out and about. Gene Hackman, yeah. on the other hand, is like, like, he was trending last week on Twitter. I'm like, what happened? And he was alive, thankfully. It's just Same that he with, showed his face and the paparazzi was like, oh, my God. Yeah, he like went into a, I don't know, he went to a convenience store or something. And the New York Post was like, he wore the same outfit in one week. So, so do I. <laughs> you know, like, leave him alone. Leave leave him alone. Leave Clint Eastwood. Like, just leave them all alone. They're old and like, they, yeah. And somebody said, what a, he is a legend. He's totally total a legend. legend. Just Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I have one more thing to show you, which is very inspirational. Um, but before we get to that, let me just uh, make sure that we're thanking everybody. Andrea Viola, thank you. Andrea says, I will buy first class tickets to Gaza for all trans people. Yes. I like that. I like yeah. it. Mendy Owens, thank you. Mendy says, hi, pronounced hi means yes in Japanese. That's right. I am so bad on my Japanese after all these years. <laughs> she worked for a Japanese company for years. Okay. Hi, that, that's right. Because I used to work with a woman at the University of Maryland, the Asian division. Um, Sumiko. Oh my God. Her name just came to me. Sumiko. And I, and I worked <laughs> with her and whenever I would ask her, she never liked to talk to me at all. She just didn't really, really? like being there. Yeah. She wasn't very nice. But if I had to, if I needed something from her and I would ask her, she would be like, hi. And that's how she would answer me. Yes. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Okay. That's yes. <laughs> all right. Now we know. Now we know. Teresa Raimondo. Thank you. Teresa says, when you answer the phone, it's mushy mushy. That's right. Say hello in Japanese on okay, the phone. Okay, that is adorable. Yeah, mushy mushy. That's mushy, how they mushy, answer the phone. Mushy mushy. I love that. <laughs> That's really cute. <laughs> Bethany, everybody's giving me Japanese lessons, and I'm the one that freaking lived there for a I time. I know, right? You did. So it was, it was quite some time ago, though. It was. It was in the. It was. I lived there from 1987 to 1989. Yeah, I so, feel like that was just a little bit ago. I like get a, just a hot minute. <laughs> it yeah. was a while ago. Mm -hmm. Bethany Brandom, thank you. Bethany says, here from Bakersfield, California. I am so embarrassed that this lady is in fr is from my mostly conservative town. Yeah, I'm sorry that yeah, well, you have now to share space with her. Now she's in a correctional facility. <sighs> Where she belongs. And I hope she's right. crying. So much mm -hmm. crying. I'm hoping mm -hmm. for all the crying. Victoria, she said, I was born in Japan and my dad lived in Okinawa. That's where I lived, is in Okinawa. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Anyway, some words of inspiration to carry us through this Monday. This, I mean, if you don't get inspired from this, I don't even know, you guys. I don't even know. You crackheads wake up and say, I can't get high today because I'm broke. No. They get up and they make that shit happen. That's true. Okay. So don't get out hustled by a crackhead today. You crackheads. <laughs> it's true. You guys hustle. Don't get out hustled by crackheads. Guys, They're going to make shit happen today, you guys. <laughs> make it happen get out there and hustle it's great advice <laughs> do it <gasps> no Happy schlong today no special schlong, no schlong. only because it, well it it's was the tax weekend. day it's tax day and tax everybody day. just needs to go and and actually hustle so you can pay for all the things <laughs> That's okay right. all right <gasps> you guys bring it in let's bring it in i'm not going to bring astra in here because i i'm just going to be honest i really have to pee i do i have to pee so bad you guys just being honest, we keep it real here, and I really have to go. So, you guys have a great Monday. Happy Tax Day, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.